Hi, it's Panda Movies here. Today, I'm going to explain the movie called Flatliners. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. Enjoy the video. Courtney, a medical student, is preoccupied with the concept of the afterlife. Jamie and Sophia, two of her classmates, are invited to participate in an experiment in an abandoned hospital room in which she would use defibrillation to stop her heart for 60 seconds while recording her brain. She assures them that they will not be held liable for any mishaps. Sophia is against it, but Jamie goes ahead and does it. They are unable to revive her after 60 seconds. Ray, a fellow student, assists them in resuscitating her. Ray's opponent, Marlo, arrives and discovers the experiment. Courtney begins to recall incidents from the past, such as her grandmother's bread recipe. Courtney gains in intelligence and euphoria, suddenly being able to play the piano after 12 years and answering all of her classmates' questions correctly. Jamie flatlines, envious, but has a terrifying near-death experience when he runs into his ex-girlfriend. Marlo and Sophia follow suit, flattening for longer and longer periods of time. They are nearly apprehended during Sophia's turn and depart the hospital, arriving at a party. Courtney and Jamie begin to have glimpses of past mistakes, but they keep it a secret from the others. Those who pass out have visions. Courtney is haunted by her sister Tessa, who died in a car accident she caused while texting. Jamie is haunted by his ex-baby, girlfriends with whom he became pregnant and pleaded for an abortion. Marlo is plagued by Cyrus, a man who died when she screwed up his prescription, and Sophia is haunted by Irina, a girl whose life she ruined out of envy by hacking her phone and putting out her nudes. Sophia was able to graduate as valedictorian as a result of this. Courtney, traumatized by her visions, records a statement apologizing for the repercussions and explaining that her interest in flatlining stemmed from her sister's death, not from scientific curiosity. Her sister's spirit pulls her off the fire escape of her apartment building, and she falls to her death. When the others learn of Courtney's death, they are devastated, and they fear they could be implicated if their experiments are discovered. Marlo is taken to the morgue to find Courtney's phone after attempting to destroy any notes and evidence from Courtney's apartment. She's being plagued by visions once more. Jamie hears the cries of a baby and a lady crying on his boat once more. He jumps off his boat and swims to the dock, where he is stabbed in the hand by a person. The group sees Courtney's recording and learns that she has had similar experiences with hauntings. They admit their misdeeds and conclude that the hauntings they're experiencing are hallucinations brought on by guilt over their sins, rather than paranormal beings. Ray, the only one who didn't pass out, is initially skeptical of what's going on. The group takes measures to put an end to the hallucinations by correcting their previous errors. Irina accepts Sophia's apology when she visits her. Jamie pays a visit to his ex-girlfriend and learns that she did not have an abortion and instead chose to keep the baby. He apologizes and offers to care for his son. Ray and Marlo quarrel after Ray discovers Marlo covered up the true cause of Cyrus's death and she refuses to admit it. While driving, Marlo has a suffocation hallucination and wrecks her car. Marlo flatlines on her own, tired of being harassed by her hallucinations, in the hopes of begging Cyrus's forgiveness. Ray, Sophia and Jamie hurry to the scene to put a stop to her. They resurrect Marlo when she sees a ghost of Courtney, who tells her she needs to forgive herself. Marlo is placed on probation after telling the dean about Cyrus's death. In the modest cafe where they hang out, Marlo, Ray, Sophia and Jamie remember Courtney and celebrate their friendships, there is a rendition of the piano piece that Courtney played. Ray and Jamie propose a toast in Courtney's honor. 